typical winter's morning here in Northern Europe. Very cold, with very short daylight hours. So I've set off early, and my destination is a clear water lake, where I'll fish, camp, and soak up some time in this winter landscape. A blizzard just recently passed over, and although the winds have died down today, they've helped form some compacted snowdrifts along this long and narrow stretch of track. So first things first before I get in too deep, I'm dropping my tyre pressure to around 7 psi, mainly to stop traction loss and axle hop on steady inclines. This old tractor is plugging away, and it can do this kind of work all day without issue. I, on the other hand, have a very long drive ahead of me, so I'm going to spend some time to save some time. Well, that's the plan anyway. I'm putting on one set of chains on my rear axle. Now it has to be said, with road chains this wouldn't be ideal, because steering takes priority, but in my case this gives my stronger traction-aided rear some serious pushing capability, while my front tyres stay a little bit more elevated and float on the snow. It's overkill obviously for these snow conditions, but sometimes you just have to trust your gut, rather than slide off of a track and lose all your daylight hours to a self-recovery.
The lake is in the distance, and I finally arrived. That was a long drive, even though on film it probably didn't seem like it. Or maybe it did. I'm glad I took the time though to put the chains on. Despite the shallow snow, I hit some compacted areas, and they just kept the jeep moving without any loss in momentum. Well here I am, finally arrived at camp. A bit of a long journey that one, but uh, I did take the scenic route. Got a little bit of daylight left, but not too much this time of year. And the sun is already on its way down. <laughs> but I'm not gonna waste any time. Before I set camp up, I just wanna see whether I can get something better for dinner than what I already have, although what I already have is pretty good. The ice is pretty thick, but better safe than sorry. Pretty damn thick. It's a fish. Normally I'm pretty unlucky on video with ice fishing, but uh, sorry pal, you're gonna be eaten. Problem is I'll have this fish and then put it back because it's not quite big enough, then I'll catch a few more like this and it could have made up a meal, so. I'll have these for dinner tonight. Hopefully I get some more. Oh, another tiddler. See you later, pal. I don't plan on fishing for too long. I mean, I can't because the sun has already set behind the hills behind me. But I've caught quite a few small perch with only three of them being big enough to make the fish finger side dish with tonight's meal. I can't complain though. I'm always honored to just be out in these environments. So adding some fresh fish to dinner, no matter how small, just makes me feel more at home. It's cooling off though, and it's quietened down under the ice. So I'm packing in the fishing and returning to the Jeep to prepare for a dark and cold evening. These are very small perch and this is not the right knife for the job. My fish knife is nowhere to be found. I don't know what's happened to it. I think it's in the kitchen at home. But I'm thinking as long as I can get a couple of fish fingers worth out of these, it's a feast as far as I'm concerned. Well, there we go. A little bit of a side dish with dinner. Shame I couldn't get more. Really went very quiet towards the end there. I should have got here earlier and it probably would have been much better. But the first fish I had off camera, I know was off camera, Maybe, maybe like that. So it's nothing special in the perch world, but for eating, it, it would have been good with all of these. You know, it would have made it up to something more.
Once upon a time, I used to hate this tent because the door opens downwards. So you end up sitting on it, but it, for winter camping, it is brilliant because, you know, if you've got a bit of snow on you, it's on the door. And then when you get out, you can just kind of fling it away and keep the inside pretty dry. So without them really knowing it, they made quite an efficient door for winter camping. But just getting the bed and everything set up, pretty easy these days. and dry it off a bit. I'm looking forward to having some to eat, I can tell you that. I'm also going to buy a sled, a little one, just for logs and uh, pulling the fishing kit out on the lake because uh, I really am working doubly hard and I really don't need to be. But, uh, you know, you live and learn. At least I stay in shape. It's going to be quite challenging to get these lit with a ferrocerium rod given that they were quite damp to begin with but I'll give it a go just because uh, you know it's the way we know it's the way oh ho, ho there we go that little thin strand I thought that would be the one just can't let it go out now because it will very quick try and get some other bits going well as long as that wood gets lit we're all good even little pieces like this can really help you just feed it in and that piece can definitely catch fire quite quickly got a little resinous piece there as well nice and dry that'll save the day I expect it is good to keep your hand in the game though and practice these skills as much as a ferrocerium rod isn't exactly what I would call basic skills it is sort of like more of a sustainable tool than relying on lighters and gas and all sorts of other things and when you're in these sorts of temperatures and you're out here it's good to uh, be able to revert back if need be. Kind of like me, you know, I bought the 16 inch black mamba, but before that, I often made my own, you know, exhibition grade walnut produced a pretty good finish. And uh, now, now I can't go back, you know, just can't go back.
been quite an active day, a lot of driving. Although driving itself, generally you don't move that much. When you're filming it, you kind of do. And obviously, you know, tire pressure and chains. And I'm really lucky. I almost went in the ditch at one point. It, it can really catch you out these, these service roads because the edges are dipped to allow runoff. But I've got no company this time, unlike the last video. I'm, um, I'm solo, which, uh, which isn't a problem. It's good to be solo sometimes. Good to be with yourself and... You know, well, I'm never, I'm never truly solo, am I? Let's face it. I mean, I know Bigfoot's been ghosting me in those hills to my west pretty much all day. I've heard him like knocking stuff on wood and you know all kinds of noises. But I, I suppose what he was hoping for is um, that I would fall through the ice, and then he'd have like an ice lolly, sort of to eat for the evening. Well, this is all we got from Mother Nature this time. Six fish fingers. It's not bad, I guess. But it ain't great. Minus 10, apparently, on the thermometer, but supposedly much colder tonight about minus 18 apparently but i uh, got myself a steak so i'm also going to chuck that bad boy on these are frozen already but that's okay now they are like fish fingers um so i'm going to get a little bit of black pepper on that so i've got rice asparagus some breaded fish and a bit of steak so it's pretty good really isn't it could be worse. Captain Bird's eye would be proud, I think. I mean, he definitely wouldn't like them. That's just too green. And he probably wouldn't like this either, but he'd like these. They just need to be a bit more orange and then they'll kind of fall in line with his product range. Ooh, real good. Starter. Well, there we are, dinner's served, the fire's stoked, and um, I can sit and watch it. This steak looks pretty good, actually. Oh, it looks good. It is good. It's been a really chilled camp so far, literally. But dinner is done, and I'm starting to pack down and get ready to bed in for the night. I still have a 100% battery on the power bank, despite the food warmer running all day. And I've preheated the tent with a diesel heater, so my bedding is warm, and I can sit in it and wind down for a couple of hours before going to sleep. Hopefully, it's a sound night. I slept well, but that doesn't mean I wake up well. I'm a bit like the Jeep getting cold started in the morning, and that's at home also. So you can imagine, it takes me a while to start up on a cold winter's morning. The battery is down by almost 50%, so the food warmer must have been hanging on for dear life, trying to keep things above freezing. 
But it's tea time and I'm using some very disappointing Primus Winter Gas, which is barely working and only serving to delay my awakening. Although the sun is breaking through the trees at the edge of the lake, and its barely warm glow is making me feel more human again. Well, it's a pretty cold morning, about minus 15 degrees C. Very high humidity, it's in the 90s. And uh, I think that's why my mouth's not moving pr so well. Um, it could have been Bigfoot. He might have paid me a visit in the night and I, I could have been out cold, but I did sleep pretty soundly. But the sun's out and it's a clear day and hopefully temperatures will start to rise. But I've done a pack down on the tent using the diesel heater, just like a condensation removal. So it's all packed away, ready to go for next time. I'm also dumping all of the power in this EcoFlow that I use for the cameras, like when I'm up in the roof tent charging in the evening. And I'm putting it in the all powers unit to um, get it ready for warming up the diesel engine, ready to start a bit later on. Stunning environment though, I much prefer winter to summer and I guess one of the main things it's not just beautiful and more challenging and, and everything else but you can take a dump in the woods and there aren't hordes of mosquitoes, horseflies, midges and other such things trying to bite my ass. You can't really argue with that. Well, as much as I kind of feel like making a fire again, I think we're going to go easy and uh, use the white gas stove. That should do it. It's not perfectly central most of the time, but it seems to work. Some people don't really like these uh, white gas stoves because you know, you've got to prime them and it's a little bit of faff. But in the winter, they're so reliable. I bought some Primus winter gas. It's supposed to operate down as low as minus 15, but it was useless this morning. But then saying that, when those reactor stoves are working, I mean, you can boil 1.3 litres of water in, in like under two minutes. They're ridiculously fast. But it's a luxury again, like all this stuff, so can't beat an open fire really. With breakfast on board, I'm feeling alive again and it's time to begin the diesel engine preheat prior to startup. The system I use isn't ideal to be honest, as it uses a power hungry electrical element. Hopefully two hours is enough though to help it in minus 15 degrees C. But in the meantime I'm packing down camp, and I always try and pack everything away so it's ready to use for next time. It makes getting out on short outings like this much more spontaneous, and there's less for me to think about prior to setting off. Although this vehicle isn't an everyday driver, so again, that makes it a bit easier to leave it packed up. 
In the meantime though, I'm going back out on the lake to add some fish to the menu on the next camp, just in case I'm not so lucky next time. Although you could hardly call it luck this time round given the size of the fish. Oh, I'm on. I'm on. Oh, it's a tiddler. But you know what? Captain Birdseye would not be unhappy with that because that is essentially two fish fingers. Yeah? We're looking at two fish fingers. Isn't it a pack of 12? Pack of 12, I think. I'm sorry I have to break your neck, but I'm going to eat you. I'm going to put you in the fridge and I'm going to eat you later. Bring it up fast. Don't give it a chance. Come on now, Captain Birds. Like, that's an all right one for Captain. Yeah. But you're about the same size as the first one, and that made two fish fingers, so I'm sorry. Your time's up. Okay. In the world of perch, you would be smoked or fish fingertized. And that's that. Let's do a reel up this time. Oh, it feels like an absolutely not a rubbish one. Oh, it's a little bit better. That's a Captain Bird's Eye winner. Check it this out. Captain Bird's Eye winner. Could have done with you last night, mate. Well, there's obviously a lot of perch in this lake, but uh, I imagine if you went out further into the deeper areas, or found some sort of uh, interesting artifacts under the water, big rocks, a drop off, things like that, you're gonna probably find bigger ones. But um, the sun is about to say goodbye and go behind that little hill in the distance. I've been out here for a while, um, mainly just on a bit of a food gathering sesh. I'll put these in the freezer with the other stuff I've got and then next time I come out, I'll bring it with me. But uh, three little perch, it's pretty pathetic, but you know, just, just is what it is. I'm gonna go start the vehicle now. I think the engine's probably warmed up. It's midwinter here in Northern Europe, and today is the shortest day of the year. The sun rose at 10 p.m. and it will set at 13.51 this afternoon. Temperatures this morning are just below zero degrees C, meaning the snow is wet and compressible. And this is making driving conditions feel pretty easy, especially given the XJ is on five PSI.
a pretty leisurely drive, nothing really too spectacular in terms of snow conditions. This morning it was about zero degrees C, tonight it's going to be minus 18 and a couple of days ago it was minus 30 degrees C. The weather's really crazy at the moment, we just had a big storm pass over but the snow isn't really that high and it's compacted down due to the uh, warmer temperatures we had. The only thing I've got to watch is sometimes the tracks can be a bit narrow and you can drift off towards the edge a bit because the tracks are kind of curved like this to allow runoff when the snow melts it uh, you know sometimes you can't quite see the edge. The brightest part of the day is behind me, and I'm deep in the rolling hills of this wilderness area. Temperatures are dropping though, and I can feel it on the inclines, and behaviour of the tyres, so I'm going to stop and even the odds. You can kind of see how the weather's changed. It's now turned the snow into like granules, it's still a little bit damp. You get very little traction, surprisingly, in snow like this. So I'm going to put a set of chains on. I might actually put all four on, just because of where I'm going and the predicted weather conditions tomorrow. We're expecting more snow. I think chains can be uh, sort of off-putting for some because uh, they take a bit of time to set up and it can be kind of a bit of a pain in the butt and then you drive with them and they loosen up and you've got to sort of tighten them up again. That's why it's good to make sort of decent tensioners actually. But I've just marked all the links out of mine with a little bit of red paint. So I know exactly how to set them up uh, pretty, pretty fast. I'm not going to put a time on it because I'll just embarrass myself. That one feels like it's going to loosen right up. going to be a lot I get stuck on now. Uh, low pressures and chains is something I use quite a bit but it really depends on the snow conditions. Like the, the thing about chains is they dig when you spin the wheels too fast. If you're just tractoring along and you've got something hard under the snow or the snow's kind of wet and compactable you know you can go slow and they can add you quite a bit of traction to the tyre but there are situations where you don't really want to use them when you want to float on the snow when the snow's too deep but we're not really at that point yet in the year the snow's not that high, we're still floating pretty well with the chains. Even if we spin and dig, there's going to be something hard underneath to grip it. And the snow doesn't max out the ground clearance of the Jeep, so those are the factors really. But now we're just moving really easy through the compacted snow drifts. Despite the added traction, nature has shown me once again that I need to pay attention. This isn't a dramatic recovery though, just a very typical one that I find myself doing at least a handful of times every winter. I went the wrong way, couldn't turn around and tried reversing back up the way I came, and in the process slid off the track. This 
me it's got about as much traction as a, a tub of aqua glide. I mean, it's just turned into table salt throughout the day. Back on track, although it looks like I won't make it to the location I originally marked on the map, so I'm going to descend into this small valley and set up camp at the next clearing. Given that I only have about one hour of daylight left before it's dark, my plan is to use this time to gather and prepare as much firewood as I can, in preparation for a long dark cold evening. The wood at ground level is damp, so dead standing is generally what I'm looking for. Dead goat willow and spruce are commonly found suspended off the ground here, and the core is always dry when it's like this. Obviously the bigger the better, but beggars can't be choosers, and I'll take what I can get. It's often pointed out on my outings that I'd be much more comfortable in a hot tent, or a heated van, but in all honesty I don't come out here to look at the walls of a tent, or look out the window of a van, and while I still can, I like to spend my time outside soaking up the environment until it's time for bed. It's what I enjoy and why my setup is the way it is. Although I will add that these days my setup is much more elaborate compared to the ventures I did in my 20s and early 30s. But despite this, I still love every minute of my time out here, come rain or shine. Some energy. Been multiple fires here. I think hunters have uh, used this place. Well, this is the next 20 minutes of my life wood processing, 
time well spent though, it's going to be cold tonight. And uh, although I won't cook on an open fire, like I did last time, it's nice to be by a fire when you want to be outside. I don't like coming out here and just sitting in my roof tent, you know. I'd like, I like to be outside, I like to feel the weather on my face. I like to, I know he's out here, yeah. big foot, he's smell his ass. He's fucking right somewhere, mate. Last one. Picked up this bark on the way in. Should be a great tinder. I'll leave that there for later on. That's basically the roof tent done. Um, I decided to change the setup a little bit. Um, I built a ladder. It isn't completely finished yet. I, I was gonna add some kind of traction here. I just haven't figured it out. And it's got like a temporary coat of paint on it. I was gonna wrap to line it with like an aggressive bed liner, but it's bolted in pretty solid. Two plates on the inside here at the bottom and at the top and on the outside as well. You know, it's pretty good. I just need to build a step down here that goes in the two inch hitch, like the, the toe socket thing. So I can stand on that first, then go up. One last piece of the glamping puzzle, it's just got the diesel heater plugged in. Turn that on later, mainly because uh, night time starts at three o'clock in the afternoon. So there's a lot of downtime, a lot of reading, and I've basically got all five seasons of gutter mouths to get through tonight. Uh, so, you know, it's gonna, it's gonna be a really busy night, basically, but uh, someone's gotta do it. Time for a cup of tea. You know it is. Just granules. It's so difficult to drive in these conditions. This granulated snow is always the worst of it. I'm gonna do a couple of litres of hot water in this flask. Should keep me going for the rest of the day. in on some hot water melts it pretty much straight away and now it can be reboiled there we go
The heart of the campfire is blazing, especially now that I've put on some dense resinous pines that will keep it burning wildly for many hours to come. It's about 1700 though, meaning it's dinner time for me. I've got some steak and rice along with some eggs and other things for afters, and it should tie me over for the night. The rest of my evening will be spent sitting by the fire and doing the odd camp chore here and there. Then it's time to climb up into the roof tent and hunker down for the night. Well, it's bright and early in the morning and I slept pretty well, to be fair. I was out cold by about, I think, nine o'clock and, and woke up around three, heard something moving around outside. Yeah, and then went back to sleep again, but my sleeping bag is extremely warm. And although I was overheating at the beginning of the night, it did drop quite a bit and I'm glad I brought it with me because it was really comfortable. But I've had the heater running now and obviously it's very, very frozen in here when you wake up. So one of these after the heat is running just to help out and then you know, it, it's a really good thing to do basically to combat condensation. Also that tray that I've been using up here for my boots, that thing has proven to be a game changer up here. And one of the best things is I can take a dump in it. It's frozen in the morning and then I can just wing it out the door. So again, multi-function. Well, it's predicted to snow all day and uh, typically I uh, took my awning off the last time I came out, not the actual mounting in the bag, but actually took the material off of the awning because it had mould on it and I had to put it in the bathtub and treat it. So that's kind of still ongoing. Um, so I don't have an awning, <laughs> so everything's just going to get covered in snow, but whatever. That's my trick in the morning to keep the can going. Just put an extension on the exhaust and a bit of warm air hit the can. It's like a, a lazy, desperately need a cup of tea in the morning trick. And obviously like every morning when I'm out, I'm doing my condensation removal process of my roof tent. So if you have a look at it, the mattress is stuffed underneath the floor of the roof tent and the outlet for the diesel heater is pumping hot air underneath all of that which is kind of coming out around the sides and going up and kind of removing all the moisture in the tent. So the issues where I have had um, condensation building up, it's not kind of in the open spaces where air can move around. It's where the bottom of the tent, like the condensation mat and the floor and the mattress are up against the material and you get frost building up in between. And uh, if you don't sort of deal with that and you go home, put it in a garage and you don't open it, it obviously turns to moisture and you might have issues if you leave it for too long. So this is just kind of my process anyway for uh, yeah, getting it sorted.
smell you in my dreams. Your eyes, they smell like beans. Stupid. This is probably my last camp of 2023. It's been a pretty good year to be honest, been out quite a bit. Obviously done a lot of work on the Jeep as well, building the three link and just, yeah, t tons and tons of work on it this year. I've got quite a lot done and it's uh, it's been performing really well. Still no lockers though. Still coming out here without lockers, although you'll probably see in the recovery footage, the rear traction device in the eight and a quarter does work very well, even on these 35s and even with chains. It is basically just an, a limited slip diff from what I understand. I don't know what Jeep call it. Is it a track lock or something like that? But it, it works really well. So, you know, I guess I have three wheel drive at the end of the day when things get tough, but um, I'm not gonna stick around here too long. I'll be honest with you that this, this camp is, uh, was more out of necessity for me just going the wrong way. So there's been more snowfall and not, not a huge amount, but you can kind of see some of the snow drifts that have been created in the days gone by. And obviously we've got like a, a fresh layer of powder on the surface that is con contributing to just a bit of a higher level of snow, but that shouldn't be an issue. It's just powder, it's pretty easy. And then underneath that, you've got that crust I talked about yesterday, which is kind of not as bad as it was yesterday. And then underneath you have the granules, which you can, kind of see there they're like little little balls of water that have uh, kind of frozen that be my brush cleany cleany clean and stop water going inside the vehicle as much as possible. The death of all charities. I've had those rear chains now for about four or five years and, and they're really good chains. Um, I've made some changes to them. They're originally for a 32, so I lengthen them and put more cross links and stuff and they function really well. It's a slightly heavier chain. I opted for a lighter chain for the front. Um, I probably won't ever lock my front axle because it's a Dana 30, 30, sorry, not 35, a Dana 30. Obviously recently built that up and uh, made it as tough as I could with chromolys and things. But you know, I'm in Europe and, and obviously in the US you have a lot more options with axles and parts here. You just, you just don't, it's too expensive. You just got to try and make things work. So a 35 is probably the biggest tire I would ever go to. Um, but I didn't want to add too much weight to the tire really with, with a very heavy chain, but it's not a brilliant chain. I'll be honest with you. It is a pain. Um, in the ass to work with. I mean, it doesn't even make sense that this won't go through that hole now. It doesn't want to go through that friggin' hole, does it? Thing is, if I even get it through that hole, it's never gonna fucking come out. That's the problem. I have to take my gloves off. Now, then you know it's shit because you've got to take your gloves off. And I'm bleeding everywhere. They use these. And they're just crap. You shouldn't be using those for, for this to go through. Just sh shouldn't be done. It's a bit tighter, I suppose. 
But I've got a, I've got a funny feeling I'm not getting out of here the way I thought I was, which was all the way down there for about another probably 45 minutes of driving and then out onto a road. And the reason being is there's been so much snow that when the plow truck crump comes, crumbs, comes, it's gonna create a snow wall right at the edge of the trail onto the road. And it's really dangerous to like punch through that, go onto a main road with moving traffic and then kind of get your speed up and all that kind of stuff. And the issue being is I have to air up, I have to get the chains off, air up, before I get out onto that road, which then impedes my performance really of punching through that um, snow mound and getting out onto the road so I can potentially get stuck and block the road. So I might have to go all the way back the way I came because that takes me onto a much smaller road with very little traffic. It's much safer to embark onto the road. So uh, you've got to think about all of these things when you come out and do this sort of stuff because the last thing you want to do is cause an accident. Um, you know, or being one yourself, you know what I mean? Now I'm not talking about the type of accident where, you know, you shit yourself in the tent, you know, that. <sighs> yeah, we've all, we've all done it, right? pretty good, obviously a bit gluggy, but you know, but the important thing is to keep an eye on oil pressure, it's probably one of the most important things really with, with these sort of old diesel engines, oh, I don't trust this gauge, I put that straight into the block. has to be said, following tracks from a previous day isn't much fun. Staying on them just isn't as easy as you think, but it all depends on the type of snow you're driving. In Sweden, this type of snow is called soccer snö, meaning sugar snow. It's hated by forest workers, loggers and machine operators because it's very, very poor for traction, and it's notorious for vibrating machinery and axle hop on inclines. I've finally finished some much needed upgrades on the Cherokee and I'm excited to get back out and spend a few days exploring and camping in the wilderness. There has been a lot of snowfall though so I'm wrecking this service road to see if any of the trails branching off of it have been worked before the last dump of snow. The snowfall on this track is the lowest I can find around here, so I think I'm going to give it a go. This track's about half the height of the other tracks I've found, so they're somewhere up here. So it should be doable on my setup. I'm only on a 35. Yeah, it's not a particularly big tyre for this kind of work, you know. Really, you want to be on a much, much bigger flotation tyre at this time of year. So I'm going to go down to about 4 psi, see how it goes.
The Jeep's doing a pretty good job of floating on the snow, especially given its weight and tyre size. However, I am taking it pretty slow, mainly because the snow is very granular underneath, meaning it doesn't stick together or form a solid surface when driven over. So if you spin your wheels, you tend to sink and get hung up pretty easily. I'm heading into open ground, and this is actually a pretty risky move in a setup like mine, because of the effect the wind has on the snow. It creates very compacted snowdrifts with a hard top crust, and they can really catch you out. Couple that with the sugar snow underneath, and it makes for challenging conditions. But the forest is just on the other side, so my plan is to drop it into third and hammer it through this section with momentum on my side. Drifts to the right of the Jeep only seem to be getting bigger, and I'm starting to get that feeling that this is going to be a long day, with very little ground covered. Snow is so variable. Uh, there have been times I've been out and it's been as high as the bumper, just pushing it along all day. And there are times like this where it barely feels that high at all, but it feels as if I'm having to really work very hard, or the Jeep is anyway, to kind of get through it. So I'm completely hung up now. Uh, the tyres aren't doing anything. I can put it in gear and the tyres will spin um, and the Jeep goes nowhere. So um, it's all packed up underneath and uh, I have to kind of try and free it up. I'm going to use some traction boards to get unstuck. These are a new addition to my SAF recovery gear, and they were kindly provided by a company called Sapari. They didn't ask for a video, but I'm not one to accept freebies without saying thank you, as it looks like they'll be very useful for situations just like this. Chuck this thing. Right there.
I run studded tyres, so uh, you can see they, they don't really uh, get on well with studded tyres, but you know, they are what they are. But what I'll do is I'll cut these off and drill eventually, and I'll put some, uh, some M8 nuts, some nylock nuts on there, so they're actually metal, and see how that hangs off uh, going forward when they're worn out. There are many situations where chains have saved the day, but I don't think this is going to be one of them, mainly due to snow conditions, but I'm going to see how it goes anyway. Normally you would see me put tensioners on, um, but I'm not going to bother with that today. I'm really just curious to see what difference this makes. Now, again, you know, putting chains on very low tyre pressures like this out here in the snow, it's not ideal, but sometimes you just got to try these things out, see, see what happens. Um, normally you could just put them on the front like this as a kind of trail breaker and have them a little bit loose. And as they whip round, they kind of break the, the top crust and, um, allow you to go through it a little bit, but you know, we'll see what happens. I'm just going to put them on all four tyres and go for it. It's going to be an epic fail, but can't say I didn't try. See how it goes. Probably going to go in second. <laughs> Although they were rubbish, they got me unstuck very, very easy. Like there is a lot more traction now, so I'm gonna try it. It's gonna go super slow. See if I can see if we can do this. Despite a bad start, the chains have made a big difference. I'm moving, be it slowly, but I've actually moved quite a distance with them on. And on the plus side, this kind of work puts very little stress on the diesel engine.
things weren't going great, but they weren't going really bad. Uh, but then I smelt something funny, and I'm not talking about Bigfoot's ass. It smelt like burning rubber, and what it is, is it's the diesel heater build I did. It's the, it's the hose getting pushed up into the crank pulley and the two things meeting and, and wearing away. And that's a real problem because obviously I could lose a belt because it'll overheat. And then, uh, and then I'm in big trouble, although I do have a spare belt. It's just a pain in the ass. Obviously you, you can avoid it, but it does mean my heating system from the roof tent is now a bit screwed up because there's probably a hole in that pipe and I have to get another one. Um, so I think I'm going to give up getting to the trail. Absolutely stuck and uh, yeah it's just it's just too much basically dug in so uh, even going back is pretty challenging through this I was hoping to get to the end there I can actually I've actually flown the drone over and I can see the end of the track and I think if I can get there I can actually turn around and then go back nose first when I need to but it's all just getting a bit much. So um I think I might I think I might back up. here till tomorrow when the snow starts to melt and gets to like plus one plus two overnight maybe maybe it's going to be easier to drive them because this sugar crap is like uh, very very difficult Take a little sample of the snow. Let's see what we can see. Oh, look at that. It's part of a U joint, cleanly broken off mine. Yes, yeah, so all the bearings are everywhere. I need to clean that up. I don't like leaving stuff like that here. But uh, it's not it's not the end of the world. Oh look, there's the cat. Yeah, look at that. Juicy. Let's get the grease in the bin. Although this isn't the first time this has happened to me, this time I'm undecided on what I'm going to do. I have my snowshoes and a sled, so I could hike to the main road and call Megan to bring spares and do a repair in the field. But until I decide what I'm going to do, I'm just going to dig. I might as well improve my situation while I think. There's really not too much I can do in this situation. I checked my spare parts. I've got a couple of U-joints, but not for the front axle, which is a real pain in the ass. I, I swear I had one, but there might have been a project or something some time back, or I don't know, maybe I gave it to someone. It's usually what happens. But uh, 
yeah I, I don't know I mean I mean I have to take apart the, the, the whole differential really and just have stub shafts with no diff and just pack tissue into the axle housing take the front um, drive shaft out and basically run it like that so uh, if it comes to that I'm gonna have to do it um, I can't really walk home because I'm not anywhere near where I live so you know that's, that's a long way away um, so I'm just gonna dig the vehicle out as best I can so that I've got a bit of a platform to work with stop in a while have a drink have something to eat and think about what I'm gonna do I mean I've got about three days worth of food got all my sleep equipment with me I've got some wood pretty much got everything I need just just to be here for well you know quite a while um, but yeah I don't know how I'm gonna get out here in two-wheel drive that's that's the problem that I'm worried about I don't know how I'm gonna do that um, so yeah I'll just keep digging till I come up with something oh look at this snowpack that's why it's so different here to earlier on the wind My attempts to position the vehicle at a better angle are failing. It just keeps moving deeper and deeper into the snowdrifts to the side of the track. Normally, when I'm stuck like this, I drive much further forward to get the Jeep back in alignment and then rebuild the track to reverse it into its previous tracks to get myself out. So I've called it in and it looks like I don't have the part I need back home. Ordering a new U-joint will take at least four days, given decent quality parts for older Jeeps are like exotic fruit here in Northern Europe. So, as an alternative, a good friend of mine who ploughs nearby has offered to come and dig me out in his tractor. He'll be passing by the trailhead in about four hours, so until then, I'm going to make myself at home, repair my heating system and do some damage control to see what I need to order to fix the axle. Oh, that's a bad one. Oh no, that's a new stub shaft. Look at it. Total mash up there. That's a shame, isn't it? It went badly. The Jeep I've had in the workshop for the last three weeks, I've been building stuff on it. You know, like the ladder, just finished that. Came out really nice, the heating system. And I completely neglected the most obvious thing, which is those crappy U-joints from Autodoc. And now I think about it, I'm such a moron for, for not doing, for, for not having spares. And, and I've got complete shafts at home, stub shafts and axle shafts, you know, real spicer ones. They're not chromolies, but at least I should have built those up and just had them in the Jeep because it's so much easier to just pull the whole shaft and, uh, you know, and tap on the, um, on, on the end of the stub shaft with a hammer, you know, put a nut on you know, loosen up the bearing, get it all apart. I mean, my Jeep's been apart so many times, it literally comes apart like Lego these days. Um, but, you know, it's an easy job to do in the field, just to pop another shaft in. And at least I would have had the opportunity to try and get out here myself. And, uh, and as I said, I would have just kept, kept going forward and then repaired the track to a point where I could then reverse back onto my own tracks and potentially get out of here. Oh yeah, cool. Thanks for the skank stroop, mate. Gotta love a bit of skank stroop. Well, it's pretty comfy inside here. That is, that is pancake mix, by the way. Nothing else. Got some uh, got the heat coming in from the heating system. So uh, very, very cozy inside the vehicle. Here he comes. 
Bless him. Well, help's arrived. That's a friend of mine, Peter. Uh, does a lot of ploughing, truck driving, lots of other stuff. So, uh, what an absolute legend um, for him to come out here. It's about about eight o'clock, so he's here a bit earlier than I thought he would be. And uh, yeah, he's ploughed this whole road. <laughs> With the road ploughed, it seems a shame not to continue on and at least spend one night here. It's probably also safer to crawl home in the daylight, given the vehicle's damaged and I can't drive that fast with it like this. I can't thank Peter enough though, what a legend. I can't really return this particular favour, but perhaps I could give Bigfoot his address or something. Anyway, I'll think of something, but it's time to get set up and make some dinner. <laughs> So once I plug this dong in here, I can test out my new setup, although the coupling hasn't actually arrived yet. But I've got this nice flexi pipe stuff here from Amazon, and that will go up to the roof tent and give me some warmth, hopefully. I thought I'd have to go in the tent to do this, but I opened it. So, in theory, just go in there like that. It's the first run of this system. So you can see, I'll just close the valve. So that is basically only letting in the slightest amount now for the vehicle. A very small amount coming through there. We should be having hot air going up in the tent now. Yeah. I can always pull that out and check, yeah. You can hear it. So I'll place that off.
Jesus. Well, it's about six o'clock in the morning and it's been a, a pretty wakeful night. Um, some serious winds coming in. I'm, I'm, there were some times where I was genuinely concerned that the tent was going to come apart um, and it's getting worse. So I think I'm going to have to pack down now and, um, and sort of make my way out of here basically. Um, just, just really because of the risk of the tent sort of something going wrong it's, it's pretty it's pretty full on um, so yeah I'm gonna do that now Hey guys, Mike here. Beginning of another trail. So I'm just airing down. I think I'm gonna go down to about 10 PSI. Don't need to go too crazy low in these conditions. Zero degrees C, so can actually make tracks today. Given how my last trip turned out, I'm hoping for a smoother run on this one. On average, the snow's about three feet high and very dense so a bit too much for my 35s to float on. But I found a semi-ploughed logging road that must have been worked before the last snowfall. This should be a leisurely drive for the XJ, and hopefully it will get me deep enough before or if the snow gets more challenging. All right, let's go.
pretty leisurely drive. Can't really uh, say it's too challenging at all. Just cruising up up this uh, this track here. It's really nice actually just to be out on a track that isn't super challenging where you're getting stuck all the time like the last couple of trips I've been on. It really does eat into the time and I kind of want to make some distance today and see where this goes. I've set off early today and it's supposed to turn into a bright and sunny winter's day, although it apparently drops off to around minus 10 degrees C in the evening. But I'm reaching the end of the ploughed section of road, and to be fair, it's taken me within 200 metres of one of the lakes, meaning I can do some ice fishing, but given how early it is, I think I'm going to keep exploring and keep this place as plan B. I don't think I'm really going to stick around here, uh, the day is young and uh, I saw a track back there, I'm going to check that out, it takes me up to a lake, it looks a bit better, so uh, see what it's like. I recently replaced some bound up spider gears on the front diff, but the downside of this is it's just an open diff again, whether as before, when it was broken, the front was completely locked all the time. It's reminded me of how much the front lets down the whole vehicle. I seriously need a locker. But in this case, the rear is doing all the work on this low traction incline, and to try and give it a bit more traction, I'm going to add some chains to keep the front elevated and attempt to push more from the rear.
I've tried taking it slow, but it's not working, so low range third seems to be doing the trick. And despite getting more traction, it's not really ideal. Chains, obviously, are great at digging. So as the front compacts the snow, the rear tears it apart, dragging the rear axle through the centre rut. So I'm going to take them off and do what I should have done right at the start, airing down even more and attempting to float while driving back and forth to compact a track. It's tedious, but it puts a lot less stress on the vehicle. I really need a front locker. Yeah, I'm nearly there, it's just been a fucking pain in the ass, this. I've reached the tree line and the track just isn't doable on my setup. I'm on one PSI and I just cannot float enough on this snow. It's deeper up here due to the cover from the trees and it's also very compacted on top yet granular underneath so traction is terrible. Despite the progress the chain's made I don't want to risk breaking something as they only add stress to everything in dense snow. In early winter snow this deep isn't a problem, it's just light powder but it's not early winter anymore so I'm going to back up and I'm going to air up a little bit and it's back to plan B. <sighs> I just leveled the vehicle a little bit more, wasn't quite happy with that, didn't need the uh, traction boards in the end, but anyway, here we are, this is it. Just going to get set up, I'm starving, time for a bacon sandwich, and then I'm going to drag my ass to that lake to try and get some ice fishing in before the sun goes down, because I really do want to do that, actually. not the best spot for uh, for filming with the sun and the angles so sorry about that but uh, I'm out the wind and it's more important that um, that's the case this evening so uh, I'm expecting a few a bit of a gusty night bit disappointed with Primus winter gas. It's not really even that cold today, absolutely struggling. It's not cheap stuff either. I have thought about going over to induction cooking. Um, I've had a few comments about that. I think it would work for me in the summer and maybe the later part of the winter and the earliest part of the winter, but in the middle of winter where you get sort of like two hours daylight and it's barely daylight, you know, the, the sun just kind of shows its face and it's gone again within sort of like half an hour, then that that's, um, it's not going to work. I, I barely generated any solar this winter. This big old all powers battery has been fantastic actually. I'm interested to see how it will do in the summer. But uh, yeah, solar, I can't imagine I'm ever going to have an issue 
when um, you get 24 hour daylight here in Northern Europe. So yeah, it's just one of those things I need to think about. It. What, what I will probably um, do though is get an electric kettle for boiling water because they do draw a lot of power. But when you have a two litre flask like this and you boil up a couple of litres, put it in the flask, you know, you are saving a lot of power really. And I don't need to muck around with stoves and everything, but have to see. Oh, good job the bears are asleep. They'll be coming in hot. This is a very relaxing experience. I yam that down like a pelican. It's even too much, really. I probably need the energy. Put some Yorkshire tea. Get to some English visitors. Look at that. Cash in on some boiling water. With some fuel on board, I'm ready to hike out and try and add some fresh perch to tonight's meal. That's the plan anyway. I've decided I'm going to set the roof tent up when I get back though, just so the vehicle is a bit more secure while I'm away. Few white maggots. I'll try my own maggot, but I don't want to deplete the lake of all its fish, so you know, you've got to be fair, haven't we? You've got to, got to play by the rules. I won't draw this out, the fishing isn't going well. With ice fishing, I normally spend 15 minutes in one location and then I move and drill a new hole somewhere else. Finding the fish is the name of the game, and if you can do that, then you generally have a pretty good day. But despite the hours I've spent on the lake moving around, I've only caught one, and it's barely enough to make up one Captain Bird's Eye fish finger, so I'm letting it go. But the sun is almost behind the tree line, temperatures are dropping, and I would like to do some wood processing before I get back to camp. So I'm getting off of this lake onto the water's edge, where the dead standing pines and fallen spruces are. Well, hopefully that's going to work, and hopefully you can hear me, because all this stuff is dead. Second time in a row. Just bought all this, and it just died. Fucking yes! Love GoPro. I like supporting the sinking ship. Got these lights from uh, Outdoor Days here in Sweden. They actually gave them to me, which is very kind. So um, the only thing I will say is they, well, I've tangled the crap out of them like an idiot. So 
It's just gonna have to be like this. I'm just gonna have to go for it. There we are. Okay. That'll do. That'll do. I know I'm using a lighter, forgive me, but uh, time is of the essence. I kind of just want to get this going and warm up a bit. And uh, yeah. cheat tonight cook on the white gas just kind of fancy it um, just rice just just goes a lot better on this that's my excuse anyway um, but uh, yeah should be a decent meal haven't even set my tent up yet crazy I'm gonna do that while this rice is uh, steaming that is a full rolling ball bag boil I better get that off. Well, the tent's all set up, just one piece of the puzzle left, and that's the, the elephant bit. Send that up in there, open that vent, pop that in. And I'll chuck this. I just need to change the vents over now, have it, the hot air going into the vehicle, because I just wanted to dry this thing off, see whether it had water damage and that's why it was playing up. I'll try that in a minute. But I can just change the vent saver pretty easily. At the moment it's, uh, yeah. Still yet to perfect that, but no, no air's coming in the vehicle and it's all going up in the rooftop tent. I've finished and eaten my evening meal and the fire is dying down, which is normally my cue to climb into the roof tent. It's been a really good day, even despite the bad fishing. And I've packed up the back of the vehicle and now it's time to get out of the cold and the wind and hunker down in the tent. Well, welcome to my humble abode. I don't even know whether you can hear me. I've strung together some extra camera crap that I carry around with me. So hopefully it sounds and looks the same as before but uh yeah i'll give you a little bit of a first hand tour here we go i tend not to rattle on about gear but i've got an x-bed mega mat duo under here and another mat under that which uh, kind of softens it up a bit it really just takes the wind off of the the in between of the roof and the, and the tent really that can be a bit of a problem but you know got a torch up there got my gear got the camera rubbish the little turd tray, very useful when you're desperate for a dump in the night and you just plop it on there and bat that thing out the window in the morning. But um, obviously its main use is to collect water off of my boots and, um, you know, or else it just gets too wet up here basically. But uh, camera gear, some clothes, some sanitary stuff, hygiene stuff. Yeah, and there's my bag on the roof tent uh, heater carbon monoxide detector but yeah it's pretty pretty nice up here to be honest very warm that's it pretty comfortable setup obviously quite comfortable for one person but you know obviously my wife and, and my family join me sometimes although not often enough these days but you know just just the kind of period at which we're in in life with young families and stuff and this kind of being something that I do when they're at work um, 
is a little bit of a different setup. You know, I'm self-employed, so my time off is, is sometimes a little bit kind of more lenient than others. But um, anyway, I'm gonna, gonna hit the sack, literally my ball sack against the side of the tent as hard as I can and see if I get a reply from Bigfoot. I'll see you in the morning. But it was a pretty pleasant night. I didn't have the diesel heater going all night. Uh, I switched it off before I went to bed and woke up about 6.30, switched it back on. And uh, the great thing is now, the engine is just piping hot. So the new system I've got is being protected pretty well by that skid plate. And uh, the snow yesterday didn't destroy it like the last time I went out. But uh, yeah, I've had it running for a couple of hours and cylinder heads are warm. Everything's nice and hot, so uh, you know when you start the engine, it should uh, just fire right up and be pretty happy. So um, that is a nice thing now about this new system. That uh, whilst I'm taking the condensation out of the tent, and drying off everything up there because of the frost and things, I'm heating up the engine too. So uh, it's working really well. I've had a few pancakes and cups of tea for breakfast and it's almost time to move on and bid this place farewell. The tent is condensation free, warm and dry, so I can pack it away without any damp surprises at the next camp. I'm almost all squared away though, I'm just making a couple of litres of water and that's the Jeep all packed up and ready to go. Well, I'm at the beginning of another track. I've actually been down this track not long ago with a friend of mine, but his Disco 2 was on street tyres, so kind of had to abort the mission. But I was keen to check it out, so I've come back in the Cherokee. I'm going to air down to 5 PSI and see where this goes. sway bar off on this one. All right.
bit sugary this snow so uh, traction is kind of difficult so once again I've come out when you see the snow it's always the most tricky kind of snow sugar snow look you can't really compact it so it doesn't stick together so this crust that's on top now is not really able to support the Jeep's weight so trying to push up these walls here it's kind of tricky I mean the reality is it's not actually that bad past this point but then you know you're in it and you've just got to make that decision when you're on your own sometimes you just got to think about these things but I think I'm going to turn around and uh, track, try and check another vi uh, road putting some air back in I'm gonna find another place to camp hopefully somewhere around here it's a beautiful spot it's quite remote it's a beautiful lake down there I'm gonna go check it out Before I get up into this, I'm going to uh, air down again. The snow's a lot deeper than it looks. This is a uh, compacted this track, but if you start spinning on it, you'll you'll start to sink basically.
Well, here we are, arrived at camp. Um, I camped at this spot with a friend of mine not long ago, to be fair, and uh, so I knew it was accessible. But this is an absolutely beautiful spot, much more beautiful in the winter than the summer. The windmills kind of aren't amazing, are they? But, you know, they're off in the distance there. You can't quite see them behind the tree line as from where I stand, and they don't really make a lot of noise. So, but I'm going to get the vehicle levelled, get camp set up, get some firewood. There she is, the new addition, the 40 plus step. Check it out. Whew, getting hungry. Real hungry. Few things to chuck in the back as usual, clothes and a hygiene bag in there and the sleeping bag. Basically it. Whoa. Oh yeah, and carbon monoxide detector. Put that in as well. Should be it. For those of you who are interested in these front runner chairs, they are nice. They're way overpriced. They're very robust, but they're heavy. So if weight is a factor, or you're trying to keep weight down, they are heavy. For a chair. Considering what other things are on the market. They're also shite in the winter, because they're not warm, so something like this helps. Yeah, that's me set up, all done. Pretty easy these days, you know, with the setup, especially now with the new diesel heater thing at the front. You know, everything's all plumbed in, permanent, so I just need to put a hose in, aka the elephant dick, and then the whole tent's warmed up. But um, pretty sure this is a Bigfoot free zone. I did smell something earlier as I was driving up here, but um, I couldn't put my finger on it. So, used condom, maybe? But, you know, there's a fine line between a dogging site and the smell of Bigfoot. It's about getting experienced with one or the other. And that way you can kind of start to become a bit of an expert in at least one of those fields to be able to rule the other one out. But, um, admittedly, one is easier than the other to get into, really. So, um... Anyway, I'm flipping hungry. I think I might have a piece of chocolate and then get the sled, the snowshoes on, get some wood and I'll be ready. I'll be ready. Be chilling. I've got easy food tonight. It's 
expect I'll cook on the open fire tonight, but just in case, top this up. I think my efforts deserve a double bagger. Oof, potent. It's the reactor, living up to its name. About two minutes. thinking you need a chainsaw you're right you need a lot of things okay can't afford it That's going to have to do. Definitely not going to work. Give it a try then. I thought I'd put in a little bit of extra effort, get some bigger logs to last me the evening. I actually forgot my torch, flashlight, sorry, in other parts of the world. Um, so apologies if it gets a bit dark later, but uh, it is a really nice time of year to be out. I know that I'll get probably a lot of shit for not using a chainsaw, but uh, I just don't have one. I just don't, I just don't have one. Um, I understand they're not that expensive, but just on a real budget right now you know what I've got is what I've got and uh, just the way it is you know and obviously when you get a chainsaw you probably want to have some protective equipment too given you're all out here on your on your own or I am anyway so there's there's the other side of it
Well, with the fire going, I don't need to worry about using gas anymore. I can just boil my water in the little pot and keep it warm in the flask. It's always a good solution, really, for the winter. I tend not to bother with the rotor packs on the side of the gull wings like you normally would see me roll around with. I find that the two litre flask and just kind of doing rotation with snow is plenty, even for washing up and stuff. And once you get a fire going, as long as you carry a pot, you can pretty much just make boiling water, warm water, really easily. But uh, I haven't actually seen him around anywhere yet. Talking about Bigfoot. Um, I thought I smelt his ass a little while back, but uh, yeah, not sure really. But on the subject of wildlife, I've only really seen three elk this winter. Um, I know they call them moose a lot here when they translate it to English, but Eli is Lomjeta Eli Posvenska, so that translates to elk. It's, it's called European elk, I think that's the classification. I've only really seen a couple of bears since I've been in Sweden for six years and... Uh, yeah, no, I mean, I guess they're waking up around now anyway and, and moving up into the fjells for the reindeer or go, going after reindeer calf and then I guess they come back down for elk calf later. Um, but I, I know that the elk numbers aren't as high as they used to be, so I wonder... I wonder about the impacts it will have on, on, on the bears. I assume if the bears go after more reindeer, they'll be shot to greater numbers to control the cull on the reindeer and thus for man dominates, nature suffers and Dildo Baggins revels in the fact that he's got free range of the woodlands without a predator in sight. I guess it's just a, a vicious circle really. But I think hands down this is one of the best locations that I've been in this winter. I like the open space and the view. Not easy to find actually. Normally I'm dug away in woodland and it, it isn't that exciting. Um, but this is an absolutely lush spot. It's a great spot to finish the year on. Well it's been a pretty lovely camp so far although look at my eyes, looks like I've been smoking crack. This fire is, um, well, the wind direction is, is kind of favouring going into the back of the vehicle, so it's, it's making it pretty difficult to just be there and uh, get ready for dinner, which is what I'm doing right now. So I think I'm going to move the vehicle and uh, hope the wind doesn't change, which is one advantage, actually, of that roof tent. It's just going to change direction again, isn't it? have forgiven me. Ooh. Demartid nu, and you'll ska you'll ska ha korv. Korv. Basically hot dogs. That's what I'm having. I'm having hot dogs tonight. I'm going to keep it simple. I fancied it. And these suckers are grade F. Great F for fantastic. The fire is a bit too hot to cook on, but maybe I can drag some embers out. Use this bad boy. No, I didn't forget the mustard. I don't like mustard. Not in hot dogs, anyway. I've got hamburger dressing and I've got dried onions, and that's the way I roll. 
let's not judge a man by which way he puts his sausage in a bun. Um, the main point is it tastes great. There we go, the morning, and uh, it was a pretty pleasant night to be honest. The windmills were, uh, windmills, the, the wind turbines, I don't even know what they're called, were um, making a bit of noise, but it was kind of like a nice noise, like, woof, woof, woof. sort of just put me to sleep. It was either that, or Bigfoot was swinging his, you know what, around out, outside the tent and sort of trying to put me to sleep early but uh it was surprisingly cold last night i'm in this bag here so comfort is about minus 25 degrees c and last night it was minus 15 so uh yeah it's a very very good bag the warmest bag i've got actually i think it's the warmest bag thermo sd the polar ranger not a cheap bag but uh a great insurance policy when you don't want to be relying on this kind of rubbish but uh, that's purely just for comfort and luxury and getting dressed in the morning and stuff and it's heating up my engine Well, it looks like winter's coming again. They always say that in April. But uh, yeah, this morning, cup of tea, obviously very important, and a double bagger. And had a little bit of birch bark left over and I've got the fire roared up again, just in case I want some breakfast. I obviously could cook on white gas, but you know, might as well burn that away and uh, clean the place up a bit before I go. But the tent is now packed away and all the condensation removed. It's one of the main things that Moore's pretty uh, strict about. Uh, with myself anyway I mean I'm going to switch it off now I'm going to have a look at the engine first okay. yeah 
yeah it's really nice and warm really warm so uh, that should start basically straight away without without any issues you know it should sound quite happy nice. looks like a better fire for cooking on this time round. Oh, I think I might have accidentally urinated on the Murica when I fired out a dehydration laser last night. I expect the French would probably consider that part of the cooking process, so I'll let that one slide. I've basically got enough for one pancake, that's all I've got, and uh, I'm gonna have it with that. I'm getting a few comments about this in some of the videos that people are in uproar. Those of you who obviously like maple syrup. Um, this is Dutch. Skankstroop. I can't even say it. Dutch is a difficult language. It's kind of like you're trying to cough up a lung. It's a difficult thing to sort of to do if you haven't grown up in the Netherlands. But um, this isn't supposed to be maple syrup. This is not a substitute for maple syrup. It's just a completely different type of sauce. And it's a Dutch sauce and it's made from um, zout. It's made from zout. I don't know what that is. I think basically it's, um, you know, like gonna be just everything that you probably don't want in your body made into a sauce. But I will agree with you, maple syrup is better. Yeah, but like for me to buy a tiny amount of maple syrup here in Sweden, I think I have to pay close to $10 for like something like that. So it's just, and this was a gift, all right? So these are my excuses, so just leave me alone. I've only got one shot at this, and I'm definitely think it's too hot, but I'm tired of waiting. That looks horrific. I think that's going to have to do. It's a bit hot, but whatever. This will be disappointing, but uh, I'm going to try and enjoy it. I'm sure it'll be edible anyway. It looks horrific. But it tastes all right. Well, full disclaimer, this is the part of the video where I talk a lot. One thing I'd recommend if you do come out into the wilderness or wherever you are, is a pair of binoculars. These are eight by 42. So you can see stuff up close as well, like insects and butterflies, if, you can't, if you're into that thing and you can't get close enough. Um, they're really, really good. You know, I've seen lots of stuff through that, lots of birds, wildlife, bear, elk, you know, loads of things. So. Um, it's definitely worth having it does kind of enhance the experience and allow you to kind of see so much that's out there and i wouldn't have spotted those things if it wasn't for those but this has been a really chilled camp i was going to do another night but i'm um, obviously not going to film it because it's much of what what you've already seen really but i was thinking about staying up here another night i think i'm going to head back down though and make my way back into uh back home basically and and uh, spend some time with the family, obviously. Uh, but it's been really good. I was going to say this is probably my last camp for this winter, but given how much winter likes to come back at the end of winter, um, I might actually probably be out again. So, uh, yeah, although I've got the four litre to, to do up, the Renix, um, I've got some sheet metal in for that now. So my plan is to get that in the workshop, take all the rusty metal out, and get that thing looking really good and uh, get it painted and get it running nice i just need to change the harmonic balancer 
and then the engine I'll do the water pump at the same time and then the engine will be really nice but um but this diesel has had a lot of love this year uh, it's had lots of parts that I've made for it like the three link and all the stuff on the axle I've made the new drive shaft for it bumper tire carrier god I've gone crazy really and I'm really decked it out and, it, and it's just such a great vehicle now such a such an awesome vehicle there are some things on it that I'm still you know not entirely that can be better um for example the rooftop tent as much as i love it the family's getting bigger once again and um you know which is obviously a fantastic thing it's what you what we want but i don't mean it like that i just mean that you know i've picked the wrong tent really and and i wish these guys would just offer one that opened like this and then opened that again if they made that tent or something similar like the eye camper but you know just just in that price range that, that opened up like that so it was i think this is two meters by 140 so one and a half meters by two meters ish so if it opened up again and it was like two meters by two meters or 220 by two meters then you've got a, basically a future proofed tent for for like a, a four you know for four people basically but um I don't know really I, I i just i've never you know what i'm like I, i've really i've never really been into rooftop tents um it works for me and i get a lot of shit on the channel about having a roof tent on my jeep um but the reality is is like i said in the last video like in in the in the summer you need an enclosed space that does not get opened until bedtime because of the flies and it's very convenient to set up, you know, the, the, the mosquitoes and everything and the biting midges and everything here is just this intense, man. So uh, the roof tent has been a godsend for that. And we have ground tented a lot as a family as well with the Jeep and without. And, um, you know, with kids, it can be difficult because they like to run in and out of the tent and like let all the insects in. that basically like start coming at you at night. I've talked all about this before, I know. But um, anyway... I'm going to make my way back um, and uh, I hope you've enjoyed this video. It's been an absolutely lush camp and if you saw the time lapse, which I peeked my head out the tent at about 3.30am, you would have seen the northern lights just over there. It was actually a really nice display on last night. I only really caught the edge of it with the, with the time lapse, um, but uh, I, I, when I was taking a leak out, out the window, I spotted it. It was, it was a pretty good display considering it said there was only a 4% chance of seeing it. So hopefully you saw that, but it was a, an absolutely beautiful evening. But anyway, I'll see you again in another video. Just want to say thanks to everyone out there for watching. Thanks to patrons for supporting the channel. Hope you enjoyed the video and uh, I'll see you again pretty soon. Hopefully.